Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Taking a look at satellite and radar, we have some showers that popped up earlier this morning. We'll I'll walk you through what's going to happen later today as our storms begin to redevelop. A man accused of killing a family in a crash is now facing more charges. Coming up, I'll tell you what those charges are. Plus, drinking water across the state may contain high levels of forever chemicals. The new report showing that your drinking water may not be safe for you and your family. We'll dive a little deeper into that this morning here on WRL News and Fox 50. I want to say first, thanks for joining us here. I'm Chris Lovingood. I'm Jeff Hogan. It is great to have you along right now as we get our Wednesday started. It is humid out there. It is hot. There's some sun that's going to play a factor, which could spark some rainstorms. I mean, that happened yesterday, Elizabeth Gardner, in the WRL Severe Weather Center. It did, and if you saw one of those yesterday, you know that, boy, it poured with those cells. We'll see that same thing again. A lot of folks won't see the rain, but where they do crop up, it's going to be raining heavily. There's a tiny little shower that developed here in Warren County. It's kind of moved across Lake Gaston. It's uh, moving on out of here. We could see a few more isolated showers this morning out ahead of our cold front, but this is the front that comes through tomorrow, and we'll definitely see some showers and thunderstorms this afternoon, and then again tomorrow afternoon with that front coming through. We have a warm, sticky summer-like air mass in place here, a couple of sprinkles around lunchtime and then turning into some of those cells that could produce some heavy rain and blustery wind starting mid afternoon that continues all the way through dinner time. You can see 8 9 p.m. Um, and then it fizzles out to after uh, say around 10 or 11 o'clock. Take a live look at Franklinton. Definitely looking at a mix of sun and clouds out there. It's very sticky. Uh, some haze with that summer heat 73 right now with a dew point way up at 67, which just makes it feel stuffy outside 90 for the high this afternoon and again tomorrow. I'll show you what that will feel like with the heat index coming up, Ken. Hi, Elizabeth. At 802, we continue to monitor a crash that happened near Wake Med. We're talking uh, a serious crash, actually, at Sunnybrook Road in the eastbound lane near Newburn Avenue. If you have an appointment at the hospital, keep that in mind. You'll see quite a bit of police activity in that area. The red you see, that's the northbound lanes there on the, on the belt line, uh, just, so, just for your information. Another crash we've been following for the last 45 minutes or so, this one on US 64 in the westbound lanes near Lizard Lake Road. Not seeing any major backups being caused in the accident scene uh, in particular, but you can see some bumper to bumper traffic developing there coming out of Zebulon on 64 this morning. Also in the triangle, the usual troubled spots, the north side of the belt line, the south side of the belt line, bumper to bumper traffic this morning. Let me show you what that looks like on a live camera this morning. This is I-40 and Lake Wheeler Road, the westbound lanes uh, moving away from us. <laughs> They're moving rather slowly this morning. And in the northern side of the belt line, this is... I-440 and Lake Boone Trail moving along at a steady clip. The westbound lane's coming toward us. So if the belt line is part of your morning commute, you might want to give yourself some extra time this morning. Breaking news are falling out of Wake County this morning. A man is facing charges of second degree murder accused of hitting and killing a family of three while driving under the influence on Memorial Day in Garner. WRL's Nick Perlin joins us live from the Garner Police Department. And this comes ahead of a visitation for that Campbell family today. Nick. Yeah, Jeff, and that visitation will be in Ellenboro, like you said, later today. Now, we did learn about these new charges that Jordan Porter will be facing just before midnight, and he is the man that was accused of driving that car that struck the uh, the car that the Campbells were driving in. Now, uh, like I said, we did uh, get this uh, uh, new information uh, just before midnight as a grand jury returned those indictments yesterday. Now, Garner police say Porter was driving on US-71 West ran a red light and struck a blue car and inside that car was two adults Tyler and Susan Campbell who sadly died at the scene and to make the story even more heartbreaking their eight-year-old son Miles who was also inside that car was pronounced brain dead the next day a visitation for the Campbells like we said will be today and tomorrow their their funeral will be held now as for Porter he is expected to face a Raleigh judge tomorrow morning we'll be sure to have the latest on what comes out of that hearing Reporting live in Garner, Nick Perlin, WRL News. This morning, soccer fans across the triangle are gearing up to see 56 teams compete for a $1 million prize during the soccer tournament. Sports stars and other celebrities will be in carry watching and competing in the tournament. And WRL's Kelsey Coffey, she joins us live from Wake Bed Soccer Park. And Kelsey, this is the first time women's teams will be competing in this tournament. <laughs> 
tourists it is, and just within the past five minutes, those gates have opened for fans to start coming in, and then the next 30 minutes, we'll uh, get to the start of the tournament here at Wake Med Soccer Park. But let's take you to video now from last year. You may be able to see some of those fans there cheering inside of the park. This year marks the first time women will be playing in the tournament. Both North Carolina FC and NC Courage are playing this week. They're both competing for a $1 million cash prize. And you'll see some big names in this tournament, like former NFL stars Chad Ochocinco Johnson and J.J. Watt. And you may remember this familiar face you're about to see from NCFC, who will be back on the field this week. You're playing a lot of people that you played in the past while you were a professional, also a lot of big names who you watched when you were, when you were younger. So um, it's really an honor to be a part of it, and the fact that we're doing it here in our, in our hometown is even better. It doesn't get any better, and our WREL sports team will have you covered with everything you need to know about the tournament. The tournament starts this morning at 8.30. Kelsey Coffey, WREL News, live in Cary. A new report out today shows drinking water for at least two and a half million North Carolinians may contain unsafe level, levels of forever chemicals known as PFAS. PFAS are a category of man-made chemicals that can build up in the environment and in the human body. Forever chemicals have been linked to adverse health effects, including cancer. A new report from the Environmental Working Group comes after Governor Roy Cooper declared this week PFAS Awareness Week everyday people to have to bear the burden of this when we know that there are companies that have put these pollutants in the water and that we know we've got to clean it up. More than 300 drinking water systems in the state contain PFAS at levels that would exceed new federal limits, including the City of Durham, Fayetteville Public Works Commission, and the Orange Water and Sewer Authority. This week marks the seventh anniversary of when the public learned forever chemicals had been dumped into the Cape Fear River from the Camores Fayetteville Works chemical plant. To learn more about the impact of PFAS pollution on North Carolinians, you can watch our WRL documentary, Forever Chemicals, North Carolina's Toxic Tap Water. Find it on WRL.com under the documentary tab. Wake County public school leaders are prioritizing pay for teachers in next school year's budget. Other areas, including substitute teachers and programs funded by pandemic relief money, could take a hit. It comes as the system received $5 million less than it asked for from county leaders. The Board of Education is now waiting on a state budget to finalize plans and secure positions. This morning, a bill that would increase penalties for people who attack power stations, that will be discussed by a Senate committee. In November 2022, two electrical substations were attacked in Moore County. Power to thousands of people was knocked out for five days. Years later, no one's been arrested. The proposed bill would make it a high-grade felony to purposely damage or attempt to damage an energy facility. Fayetteville police have charged four people for indecent exposure around the city, and they're still looking for one of those people. The incidents happened outside several big box stores. One man is facing five charges. He's in jail on $75,000 bond. Police have video of Anthony Munoz performing a lewd act on Hay Street in downtown Fayetteville, and he's the one still on the run. With a new executive order from President Biden, the southern border will close if too many people try to cross it. This action tightens asylum limits by temporarily shutting down the border once the number of daily illegal crossings reaches 2,500. The border would reopen once that number declines to around 1,500. There are some exceptions, including for unaccompanied children. Critics say this order will still let in at least 1.8 million new arrivals each year if not properly enforced. A family dog has been released from the shelter and reclaimed by its owner after it attacked a two-year-old girl. A family's Belgian Malinois bit their daughter Kennedy, leaving her with 200 stitches across the face. Animal Services is currently working on deeming the dog dangerous, and that means the dog must now be spayed or neutered. It must have a microchip and it must be muzzled whenever it leaves the owner's property. The Wake County Animal Services Director shared her thoughts about this. That surprised you? It, to be perfectly honest, it did, um, just due to the severity of the injuries to the child. I have learned that we cannot predict in this business what people will do when it involves their pets. The dog was given to a different family member and will not return home with the daughter. She continues to recover, and mom says she is doing better. 
For the next two days, crews will be looking into two buildings in Zebulon that had to be evacuated after two workers were mowing grass and discovered a mysterious substance in a ditch. Several people were sent to the hospital out of this. The crews don't believe that substance is hazardous. This happened on Industrial Drive. The WRL breaking news tracker was there on the scene for hours, along with a large emergency response. Zabulin police and fire, as well as Raleigh Fire Department, the Hazmat team, and the water company all were there. And they identified that the uh, material that originally was thought to be hazardous is likely to be cleaning chemicals uh, that were pulled down in that uh, drainage ditch down there. And right now, uh, Raleigh Hazmat is going out to that site and laying down boons, which are these absorbent mats. They'll do that over the next couple of days to make sure that they can absorb some of the chemicals that are there. Now, the two workers who came across that substance went to the hospital for reasons, precautionary measures. State and local leaders want to ensure all students have access to lunch. How they're working to keep lunch affordable to make sure kids do well in school. And a farm animal in Brazil causing quite the stir. The world's most expensive cow it even comes with her own security. And it feels like summer when you step outside. We have those afternoon and evening thunderstorms in our forecast the next couple of days. I'll show you how much rain we'll see through the end of the day Thursday. See, now this is just rude. We're showing you a live look at Carolina Beach. I gotta tell you, oh, it's so beautiful. People are outside right now enjoying the beach there. And it, come to me, come to me now. Let's, let's see me on camera. This is where we are right now. This is the opposite of the beach and we have to look at other cameras behind Elizabeth. Yeah, it is right, you know, <laughs> that is rude, isn't it? <laughs> Terrible. It's gonna be even worse when we show it like tomorrow and Friday, unless you already have plans to go to the beach. We actually have a, a pretty decent weekend in our forecast if you're sticking around here. I'm gonna talk about that coming up. Um, but it is warm and muggy this morning. We have a mix of sun and clouds of that hazy sunshine because it is an awfully sticky start this morning. There's Goldsboro and Apex, uh, Chapel Hill, courtesy of Top of the Hill Restaurant and our newsroom there in Fayetteville. The next system is headed our way with this cold front tomorrow. Ahead of the cold front, we have a very hot, steamy, sticky air mass in place. If you happen to see one of those cells develop yesterday, man, they were dumping some really heavy rain. So we have that same air mass in place today. So we'll likely have some, uh, some cells that dump some heavy rain on us. It's quiet right now. Uh, the cold front will get closer to us. We're going to add a little daytime heating to this uh, a very tropical feeling air mass, and we'll have a few scattered storms. The cold front itself comes through on Thursday uh, tomorrow, and that will continue to bring us uh, the potential for some heavy rain and some blustery winds, but I wouldn't expect severe level winds. A few isolated showers possible around lunchtime, but we really get going a little later on, say mid to late afternoon and into the evening. You can see these uh, scattered cells that pop up across the viewing area. Almost everybody should, should have at least the potential to see some of these cells uh, this afternoon. Uh, and then tomorrow we wake up to cloudy skies, maybe a little sun at lunchtime, and then the cold front comes swinging through mid to late afternoon, with that chance of thunderstorms again. Once the front passes us by, we're going to see a delightful air mass moving in. It will be a less muggy and dry for us. 40% chance of showers and storms today and 50% chance for tomorrow. After that, we are dry for the weekend. Check in uh, how much rainfall we may see. On average, it's probably going to be a quarter of an inch to a half to three quarters of an inch. But yesterday, for example, we had 1.8 inches at RDU. Uh, just a few miles down the road, I had none at my house. So it's going to, it's going to vary widely depending on where those thunderstorm cells happen to develop and move across. The weekend looks nice and dry. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Durham Bulls have a home stand this weekend. Temperatures will be in the mid to uh, low to mid 80s at game time and the humidity will be much lower than it is right now. Look at that 83 on Saturday. Looks lovely. It may get a little bit warmer as we get into next week. Ken? Oh yeah, the 817, Elizabeth, we didn't get any of that rain as well. Hey, we want to uh, check the traffic map this morning and tell you about uh, a trash we've been monitoring near Wake Med, particularly those of you who have an appointment in the next half hour or so and you're heading that way. This is a serious crash on Sunnybrook Road in the eastbound lane near Newburn Avenue. Just look for some police activity in that area. We're not seeing any major issues in terms of delay. That red you're seeing and the bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, that's the north side of the Buckland, as we've been mentioning all morning. Another crash that 
we've been monitoring this morning on Highway 64 near Lizard Lake Road, not causing any problems on 64 this morning. So uh, just look for that police activity and be careful as you're working your way through there. Elsewhere around the triangle, we're seeing the usual congestion that we see in the mornings. We told you about the north side of the Beltline and the backups that we usually see. We're also seeing the south side of the Beltline uh, that's always congested this time of the morning. Uh, to that end, let's take you outside and show you exactly what we're talking about. This is still camera shot of Lake Wheeler Road. The westbound lanes are moving away from us, so keep that in mind if you're about to head out. And Lake Wheeler Road is part of your morning commute and that part of the Beltline as well. You can always listen to us on the radio at 99.3 FM in Raleigh and 96.5 FM in Durham. Thanks, Ken. New this morning, a gunman opened fire at the U.S. Embassy in Lebanon. The Lebanese army says a Syrian national tried to attack the embassy on Wednesday. A person was injured in an exchange of gunfire with soldiers. The U.S. Embassy in Beirut says its facility and teams are safe. The gunman was taken to the hospital for treatment. President Joe Biden will meet with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky this week. The two will be in Normandy, France, to commemorate the 80th anniversary of D-Day. The White House says the two leaders will talk about the current situation in Ukraine and how the U.S. can continue to support the war efforts. Biden is also expected to meet with Zelensky during the G7 summit in Italy next week. New this morning, we have learned that an Italian court has upheld Amanda Knox's conviction for slander. This is stemming from the 2007 murder of her British roommate. Knox was originally convicted in 2009 for falsely accusing her former employer in Meredith Kircher's killing. She was exonerated from the murder in 2015, but the slander, that conviction remained. The 36-year-old was hoping that her name would have been cleared. Singer Sean Kingston is facing a million dollars in fraud charges, but he's out of jail. The singer and rapper bonded out of the Broward County Jail in Florida this morning. He was arrested in California last month after a raid on his home in Florida. He faces several fraud and theft charges. Kingston is expected to plead not guilty in the coming days. His attorneys plan to ask for a jury trial. And yay, the rapper formerly known as Kanye West being sued by his former assistant. Lauren Piscata filed a civil lawsuit accusing him of sexual harassment and wrongful termination, among other things. She alleges West repeatedly sent sexually graphic texts and engaged in lewd behavior in front of her. A representative for West denied the allegations, saying, quote, in response to these baseless allegations, yay will be filing a lawsuit against Ms. Piscata. A woman in Ohio is in custody accused of stabbing and killing a three-year-old child. The attack happened Monday in the parking lot of a grocery store, the Giant Eagle there, that happened in the city of North Olmsted. That's about 25 minutes from Cleveland. The boy and his mother were stabbed and taken to the hospital, but the boy died from his injuries. Police found a 32-year-old woman at that scene holding a kitchen knife. She's in jail on a $1 million bond. A judge has struck down part of North Carolina's law regulating abortion pills. A UNC doctor filed a lawsuit last January arguing state law conflicts with the FDA. That judge agreed, ruling state provisions requiring mifepristone to be administered by doctors only conflicts with federal law. Other requirements, including in-person follow-up visits, were struck down. Parts of the state law that don't conflict with federal rules will stay. Local, state, and national leaders came together in Cary to focus on the rising cost of school lunches. Wake County Public Schools have recently increased meal prices by 25 cents. That's after three years in a row of the price going up. Wake County Superintendent Robert Taylor wants the state's General Assembly to put more money in school lunchrooms. He says that will cost about $125 million. School leaders say having access to healthy meals will help children thrive in school. We have great data to support that it reduces chronic absenteeism, and we know that that means it increases the outcomes of all of our students. Several states, including Maine and Michigan, are now offering free school meals for all students. And breaking news right now in the WREL Life Center. WREL has just obtained the search warrants, and we're learning more information about what led up to that deadly crash in Garner that killed three people, the Campbell family. Uh, we're learning that Jordan Porter's wife was questioned after the accident. She said that they had been drinking before the crash. They were at a bowling alley in Clayton. Uh, she said her husband had about two to three beers. He also smoked marijuana before leaving the house to go to work. Witnesses who saw Jordan drink driving the car, reported that he was going about 65 miles per hour on U.S. 70. He also ran a red light.
Porter's wife also admitted that their car needed repair. She said their brakes had issued uh, issues. And she also admitted uh, that the car had not had its safety inspection done since 2020. Porter is due back in court tomorrow. Visitation for the Campbell family is today. Their funeral is tomorrow. A lot of details in that. Uh, Chelsea Donovan sending that to the newsroom. Thank you, Michelle. A cow in Brazil is causing a lot of attention there. I want to show you this. Viatina 19. She's the most expensive cow in the world. She now holds the Guinness World Record after 33% of her stake was sold for more than $4 million. Viatina 19 is watched at all times by security cameras and armed guards. Her breeder is hopeful that she can have other uh, offspring there. And you may be wondering why exactly this cow is so expensive. It's because it's the effort of trying to create more meatier cows. She has a lot of muscle. And so the goal is to create more cows with that quality. Mm. Diddy and his entertainment company have officially parted ways. The business move from the music mogul that now gives employees a majority stake in his company. Soccer fans gearing up for the big tournament this weekend, the soccer tournament. 56 teams going for a million dollars. As you get into your car, tune to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. 826 the time on your Wednesday morning. I'm Jeff Hogan. Great to have you here. We go over to Elizabeth Gardner in the WRL Severe Weather Center. We got 70s all the way around the area and just going up. Now walking out the door this morning, it's warm and muggy and quiet now, but we do have the potential for some scattered storms to develop mid to late afternoon. Some of those could produce some heavy rain and some blustery winds. That chance goes up to 40% this afternoon and then 50 to 60 later on this evening. So just uh, keep your raincoat umbrella handy if you uh, have to be headed out. It's 73 in Durham and Raleigh, 74 in Fayetteville already, and that muggy meter is way up there. If you're headed to the soccer tournament today, we'll see a high of 90 degrees, and of course, we'll be dodging a few late day storms. But happening now in the WRO Traffic Center, Elizabeth, we continue to monitor that crash near Wake Med. It's on Sunnybrook Road and New Bern Avenue right there. Uh, it's not causing any problems in the area, but just watch for some police activity, particularly if you have an appointment there at the hospital as well. Uh, the usual trouble spots this time of the morning, right? The north side of the Beltline, the south side of the Beltline as well, bumper to bumper traffic, uh, as well as I-540. And in Durham, the I-885 and the Durham Freeway also congested this morning. Man charged with DWI in connection with a Memorial Day crash in Garner's facing new charges. Jordan Porter will face three counts of second degree murder. Tyler Campbell and his wife Susan and son Miles were all killed in that crash. Porter will be arraigned tomorrow morning in Raleigh on the same day as their funeral. Next on Fox 50, soccer fans are gearing up for the big tournament, the soccer tournament. And up next on today, Jenna Bush Haggard, superstar renovators, the Brownstone Boys. We'll see you then. Shot in 4K ultra high definition, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. We have a muggy air mass, lots of moisture in place here later this afternoon. We're going to see some scattered storms popping up. I'll show you the timeline on Futurecast. And WREL obtained search warrants that are revealing more about the deadly crash that killed a family of three in Garner last week. I'll have the details. And the soccer tournament is underway here at Wake Med Soccer Park coming up. What big names you'll be seeing on the field this week. A lot of big names here, some music in the background. Yeah. The soccer tournament yeah. has finally begun. Thanks for joining us here this morning on WRL News and Fox 50. I'm Chris Loving. I'm Jeff Owen. The party is on there, <laughs> but it's going to be a hot one. They're, running, they're playing soccer, running around a field in these temperatures and humidity. Elizabeth Gardner in the WRL Severe Weather Center right now. Look at that big picture nationwide. Yeah, I think uh, if we have any local teams in it, you know, they may be, uh, you know, getting a leg up, being used to this humidity because it's going to be rough. Later in the weekend, it'll feel much better. Um, ahead of the front, it's warm and sticky. This front has been producing some strong to severe thunderstorms. It will help to produce some scattered storms for us, but we may not see severe winds here. We'll probably have some heavy rain and blustery conditions. Here's Futurecast this morning, starting off here at uh, 9 o'clock, moving through lunchtime, nice and quiet. Afternoon and evening cells start to pop up. Some of these may produce some heavy rain. We saw that yesterday. We uh, ended up setting a new daily record for rainfall at RDU at 1.8 inches. But down the road at my house, I had none. So that we had these small cells 
spells, producing a lot of heavy rain, and the pattern will be similar to that today. Taking a live look at Franklinton, some hazy sunshine out there, 73 degrees in the triangle, and our dew point is high at 67, just makes it feel sticky. We'll see a high of 90 this afternoon, and we'll see that again tomorrow, but I'll show you what will be behind the cold front that'll make it feel so much better. Coming up, Ken. 832, Elizabeth, all new into the WR Traffic Center. We just got reports of Raleigh police working a crash on uh, in the downtown area on, on, on P Street. Uh, not seeing any major delays in that area, so nothing to worry about there. This is a crash that we continue to monitor, particularly uh, if you have an appointment at Wake Med. This is right at Sunnybrook Road in the eastbound lane near New Bern Avenue. Uh, we're not seeing any major issues in that area. Just thoughts for some police activity if you have to navigate that area and you have to go to the um, uh, the hospital as well. This is a crash we've been telling you about uh, on P Street in the westbound lane near St. Mary Street. Again, we're not seeing any major problems in that area, but I know a number of you uh, work in the downtown area. If you're headed that way right now, nothing to worry about uh, in terms of uh, any downtown streets. Elsewhere around the triangle, we've seen the usual backups this morning, uh, the bump of the bump of traffic uh, in the north side of the belt line right there, as well as the south side of the belt line. And in Durham, 885 on the Durham Freeway, the usual morning congestion. So keep that in mind if you're about to head out. Ken, thank you. In the past 20 minutes, WREL has learned more about what led up to a crash that killed a family of three in Garner. The driver is now facing three counts of second degree murder. Michelle McConaughey is in the WREL Live Center. You've been looking through this documentation a little bit. Tell us more, Michelle. <laughs> Yeah, Chris, WREL obtained the search warrants, and there is a lot of information. We are currently still sifting through it. Uh, but here are some of the most notable things that we found in the search warrant. Uh, Jordan Porter's wife was questioned after the crash. She said that he had been drinking before that crash. They were at a bowling alley in Clayton where he had about two to three beers. Uh, she also said that he smoked marijuana before leaving the house to go to work. Witnesses reported that he was going about 65 miles per hour on U.S. 70. He ran a red light and struck the car that the Campbell family was in. Porter's wife admitted that their car actually needed repairs. Uh, she said the brakes had issues. She also admitted that the car had not have a, had a, spa a safety inspection done since 2020. Porter is due back in court this morning and, and due, due in court tomorrow. And as Chris mentioned, he faces three counts of second degree murder. Visitation for the Campbell family is today. Their funeral is tomorrow. Michelle, thanks for that update there. The soccer tournament starts today. Wake Med Soccer Park, the second year for this event. WRL's Kelsey Coffey joins us live from Cary, where there will be some big names in sports and entertainment at this year's event. Once again, Kelsey, good morning. Hey Jeff, good morning. So we're just a few minutes away from the soccer tournament starting. So you can see that the first match is about to get going here. We have the CONCAFA and C SC and uh, the Reggae Rovers that are going head to head now. So this year marks the first time women will be playing in the tournament. Both North Carolina FC and NC Courage are playing this week. They're both competing for a $1 million cash prize. So you'll be seeing some big names throughout the tournament like former NFL stars Chad Ochocinco Johnson and J.J. Watt. All right, it doesn't get any better than that. Our WREL sports team will have you covered with everything you need to know about the tournament. And, of course, that tournament just started here at 830, so we'll be sure to keep you updated. Kelsey Coffey, WREL News, live in Cary. A new report out today shows drinking water for at least 2.5 million North Carolinians may contain unsafe levels of forever chemicals, the ones known as PFAS. PFAS are a category of man-made chemicals that can build up in the environment and the human body. Forever chemicals have been linked to adverse health effects, including cancer. More than 300 drinking water systems in the state contain PFAS at levels that would exceed new federal limits. That includes the city of Durham, Fayetteville Public Works Commission, and the Orange Water and Sewer Authority. You can learn more about the effect of PFAS pollution on North Carolinians. Just watch our WREL doc, Forever Chemicals, North Carolina's Toxic Tap Water. Find that on WREL.com under the documentary tab. Wake County public school system leaders are prioritizing pay for teachers in next year's school budget. Now, other areas like substitute teachers and programs funded by pandemic relief money could take a hit. This comes as the system received $5 million less than what it had asked for from county leaders. 
The Board of Education is now waiting on a state budget to finalize plans and secure positions. WRL asked about the impacts this budget will have on families. Big change for parents for the new traditional school year coming up will be that we will see, we will likely see an end to several pandemic programs that we had to provide additional supports for children. He's referring to those behavioral health specialists that were hired using federal pandemic relief money that runs dry in the fall. This morning, the trial against Hunter Biden for federal gun charges will continue. His ex-wife, Kathleen Buell, will be on the stand. She is one of several Biden family members and friends expected to testify. Eventually, Hallie Biden, the widow of his late brother, Beau, with whom Hunter had a romantic relationship, will also take the stand. The president's son is accused of illegally buying and having a gun while abusing or being addicted to drugs. He has pleaded not guilty. In the Triangle, there have been at least five police chases in the first four days of this month. And we've covered at least 40 chases so far this year. We brought you breaking news coverage of the latest one yesterday morning. It ended in Nightdale. Highway Patrol says the driver was drunk and took off after a traffic stop, reaching speeds of 100 miles per hour. The driver crashed into a utility pole and knocked out the power for about 2,000 customers. Highway Patrol chases increased by 130% from 2019 to 2022, according to their latest data. The Highway Patrol declined an interview, but we did speak to the Wake County Sheriff's Office about their pursuit policy. The deputy has discretion uh, to initiate the pursuit or to terminate the pursuit if he feels that it gets to a point where it's too unsafe, as well as uh, any other supervisor that's monitoring it or uh, a secondary unit that's involved in the pursuit. As far as a threshold, uh, a lot of that is officer's discretion. Wake County deputies were involved in 74 chases last year. That's a number that will likely go up in 2024. There have been 35 already this year. Chapel Hill police identified the two people who died in a murder-suicide. We first reported this as breaking news on Monday. Police responded to a shooting at a house on Homestead Road that was just before 2.30 p.m. Tuesday, officers said 70-year-old Han Ho Choi shot his daughter, 31-year-old Hei Jin Choi. He then took his own life. In this investigation, it's still going. We also know the name of the man shot and killed in Durham Monday night. Police say 62-year-old Roy Shealy was shot on Fayetteville Street and died at the hospital. Police say they believe the shooting was an isolated incident but provided no other details. Possible changes could be coming to the amount of exercise students get during school. The State Board of Education will meet this morning about this. They're slated to discuss the results of a federal youth risk behavior survey. That survey found changes in teenagers' exercise behavior. The board will look into a policy change that would give high schoolers the opportunity to be active during the school day. They will also discuss screening for academically or intellectually gifted programming and a differentiated education plan for those students. The meeting gets started at 10 o'clock this morning. Speaking of teens here, Chris, a vote in the state house today could mean more teenagers will be charged in adult courts. The change would mean 16 and 17 year olds who are charged with violent felonies will be sent straight to adult court. This rolls back part of the 2019 Raise the Age law that kept 16 and 17 year olds in juvenile courts. The bill has passed the Senate and is expected for a state house vote today. Public safety authorities say it had an unintended consequence of overwhelming the state's juvenile justice facilities and courts. The new law also adds penalties for adults who entice children to commit crimes. They will face the same charges as the child does. And Jeff, it's important that we point out WRL's documentary unit uncovered another consequence of the law. Gangs are using the law to recruit younger members, telling kids they won't get into trouble for committing crimes. You can watch Easy Targets, Gangs Getting Younger in NC. That is tomorrow night on WRL or (laughs) WRL.com. Members of the FBI enjoyed a nice steak dinner with a side of eavesdropping. What two investigators recall about the day as they took the stand in Senator Bob Menendez's federal corruption trial. Plus, Keanu Reeves is hitting the road. The actor and singer, new summer adventure. Which city he is making a stop in? is the time right now. This is a live look in Durham. The DBAP right now. There'll be a homestand for the Bulls this weekend. The boys of summer. It's going to feel like that for certain when they get out on the diamond. 
Elizabeth Gardner is over in the WR Severe Weather Center. We're watching this next system come through. It's going to change things for us. This cold front, once it moves through Thursday, is going to open the door to some nice, cool, dry air, similar to what we saw at the end of last week, but maybe not quite the same drop in humidity. Still, it'll feel better than it does right now. We have a flow coming out of the south, dumping a lot of tropical moisture across our area. And then the cold front will help to bring us a chance of showers and thunderstorms. Even ahead of the front, we'll likely see a few of those today. We're fairly quiet through lunchtime, but mid to late afternoon, we start to see some of those storms developing. Yesterday, we had just very small cells developing, but dumping a lot of heavy rain. So we have the potential for heavy rain out of these uh, cells again today and some blustery winds, but we're not likely to have severe level winds. Check out Lake Gaston. Good bit of cloud cover here, but it is warm. Temperatures are in the low to mid 70s right now. So I bet there's some fishermen out there, you know, trying to get a jump on things. This is a, a view from the Point restaurant there at Lake Gaston. 73 officially in the triangle. We have a southwest wind at 10 miles per hour. So again, lots of tropical moisture in the area. Thanks to our weather watcher, Lisa Curris from Clayton for sending us this beautiful photo of a butterfly. Hopefully you could send us one or two also. Go to WRL.com, search weather watchers, and you can upload some photos for us to share. 90 today in Raleigh, 89 in Durham, and 93 in Fayetteville. Those afternoon and evening thunderstorms will crop up. It is steamy out there. Our dew point is at 67, and we're going to hold it steamy to tropical the next few days. But then we're going to drop it back down to tolerable to comfy for the weekend. See how we see uh, that uh, level dips down. We're going to get down closer to comfy on Saturday, but by Sunday it begins to creep back up. Here's uh, how all that, that is going to uh, work across our area. The green area is where we have a lot of humidity, so it's feeling sticky and muggy. The cold front swings through Thursday night, and behind it, our wind shifts to northwesterly. That's dragging down some nice, refreshing air, at least compared to this mugginess that we're seeing. We'll have that on Friday and Saturday, but by Sunday, this next batch of humidity starts to creep in, so um, it may get a little stickier for us by Sunday afternoon. Checking our temperatures, 90 for today and tomorrow, and with the uh, sticky uh, air mass out there, it's going to feel more like low to mid-90s. Very comfortable feeling Friday and Saturday, and then a little more humid on Sunday, but it does stay dry for any weekend activities. It feels like summer out there, right? But officially, it's almost here. A lot of folks will be looking for ways to keep their kids active and entertained. WRL Lifestyle Editor Kathy Hanran has details about three parks that families should consider checking out this summer. Kathy, good morning. You know, when the weather isn't too hot, a day at the park can be a great way to burn off that energy for the kids because you know they're just everywhere. Um, we've had several larger parks open in the area that include everything from zip lines to rock walls. Um, the first is Pleasant Park in Apex. They open late Late last year includes an enchanted forest with nine inclusive play villages for children of all ages and abilities. Right now they have a splash pad that's open too, which is great to beat the heat. Um, the big attraction though is a 35 foot slide. And so I've been fun. there uh, and that one stands up. It, it <laughs> is spectacular. Another park that opened last year was downtown Cary and the, tell us what makes this park so unique here. Okay, so it's a six acre park. It's got ponds, a waterfall, gardens, a splash pad, and playgrounds for children of all ages. There's even an amphitheater and a grab-and-go market, and there's dog parks, too, for, so the whole family can go. Earlier this year, Wake Forest opened its new inclusive playground. I remember doing the story on that. Tell us about Holding Park. This is so cool, too. Okay, this playground has double-wide ramps to accommodate children of all abilities. They also have an inclusive orbit spinner, which is a zero-entry merry-go-round that you can get on with a wheelchair. Um, the design is all about multiple sensory experiences. So you've got musical equipment, interactive outdoor games, so much fun. And we have ways for people this afternoon to be able to get tours of these parks right on Facebook. Just go to WRL Families Facebook page. Kathy and some other WRL contributors will be taking you on tours live on Facebook of these parks. How cool is that? Mm -hmm. Kathy, thanks. Mm -hmm. New this morning, a gunman opened fire at the U.S. Embassy in Lebanon. The Lebanese army says a Syrian national tried to attack the embassy on Wednesday. The person was injured in an exchange of fire with uh, soldiers. The U.S. Embassy in Beirut says its facility and teams are safe. The gunman was taken to the hospital for treatment. SpaceX has been given the go-ahead for another rocket test. The FAA gave the approval this week. SpaceX plans to run a test launch tomorrow from its facility in Texas. It'll be the fourth test flight of the space company's Starship rocket. 
The federal corruption trial against New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez is now in its fourth week. Two FBI investigators took the stand yesterday to talk about what they heard between Menendez and others that he was having dinner with at a D.C. steakhouse in 2019. The FBI surveillance teams were there eavesdropping on conversations. Menendez, his wife, and two others are accused of engaging in a bribery scheme and acting as foreign agents for the Egyptian government. Senator Menendez and the three others accused have all pleaded not guilty. His wife, Nadine, will be tried separately this summer. Sean Diddy Combs has released a major portion of his media company and television network. The music mogul founded Revolt in 2013, but stepped down as chairman last November after being named in numerous civil lawsuits for alleged sexual assault and other illegal actions. Combs has repeatedly denied the claims. A company spokesperson says the company's employees are now the largest shareholder group. Combs has not commented on why he sold his shares. San Diego Padre Tucapita Marcano is banned from playing in the MLB after he was caught betting on pro baseball games. An MLB probe states the infielder placed more than 200 MLB-related bets in 2022 and 2023. That's while he was with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Officials say 25 of the wagers included Pirates games. There's no evidence, though, that the games were compromised because of the bets. The Pirates and the Padres both issued statements saying they support the ban. It is seven months away, but a New Orleans landmark is already getting ready for some big upgrades and getting ready to host the Super Bowl. It's happening at Caesars Superdome February 9th. Those upgrades include 70 roadwork projects, 75 lighting projects, and adding greenery to some overpasses and underpasses. The city is also putting in new and improved interstate lights and repaving sidewalks. It's the 11th time New Orleans will host the big game. Our teacher of the week is like family to her students. WRL's Ken Smith is in Granville County to meet a teacher who connects with students through music. Jenny Hopgood is most gratified when her students are lifting their voices in song. Hopgood is a music teacher at South Granville High School. She's been an educator for 19 years. And every year I wanted to be a first grade teacher, then I wanted to be a second grade teacher, then I wanted to be a third. I mean, just all throughout. And then when I got to high school chorus, I just loved music and loved my experience there and knew that's where I wanted to focus. Just like the notes on a musical scale, her students say Mrs. Hopgood is there for them through their ups and their downs. I love the kids I teach. I love the kids I have taught and the relationships I've built with them. And I'm still friends with some of them and their families and get to see them grow and become beautiful humans and who they have become. I'm going to cry. <laughs> They're just I just love the relationships more than anything. With her students in mind, Mrs. Hopgood says one of her main goals now is convincing other teachers to stick with the profession. You hear a lot about teachers these days leaving the profession, and I'm like, no, y'all, come on, don't leave, come do this, it's so worth it. Mrs. Hopgood, you're WREL's Teacher of the Week. Congratulations. <laughs> Ken Smith, WREL News. She was so excited. <laughs> if you'd like to nominate a teacher, you can go to WRAL.com and enter the words Teacher of the Week in the search box. Always a great moment. Actor Keanu Reeves and his band Dog Star are going on tour. It's an alternative rock band. Announced a summer vacation tour 2024 across North America. And this comes after the group's first performance in 20 years last summer. Dog Star will make a stop in Raleigh. They'll be performing at the Ritz August 13th. Pre-sale tickets go on sale today. Reeves formed Dog Star along with Robert Mailhouse and the group's original guitarist and lead singer Greg Miller in 1991. Alec Baldwin and his wife will be the focus of a new reality series about their family. The show is set to debut on TLC next year. Both the couple and the network announced the news on social media. To our parents of seven children under the age of 10 years old, the announcement comes as Alec Baldwin awaits for his trial stemming from the Rust film set shooting. Alec has pleaded not guilty to an involuntary manslaughter charge. More stories coming up after the break.